22nd video of Andrew Brown Jr. leads family to declare he was executed with hands on wheel. And this is a topic report. And the video version of this is going to be called Andrew Brown Jr. Police Shooting Was Execution, says family, after watching 22nd video. And we just did, if you're watching the whole show, if you didn't, go to the, to the Black and Gold Freedomist channel and watch the whole show and replay. Uh, in which we talked about the George Floyd case being somewhat, somewhat am, ambiguous. It's it's in, in, it's it's not ambiguous to me in terms of something went wrong there and there was injustice, but it's ambiguous as to the degree to which there was injustice. Was it second degree murder type injustice? But in this case, more and more, uh, and I'm still open to finding new evidence, new information that might make me change my mind. But so far, the Andrew Brown Jr. case. More and more appears that 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 something went badly wrong here, and that this was this was actually the, if 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 BLM is looking for uh, a, a, an unjust killing of a black man by the police with which to stir people up into hate and frenzy and fear so that they could somehow believe that if they if they destroy businesses that that'll that'll get them what they want and that they're sometime how justified in burning businesses well here they might just have a case that actually fits the bill and you won't be able to look at it and say oh no 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 because of this of this of this so what happened here well let's go this is a topic report and the topic is andrew brown jr police shooting north carolina police shooting of black man in north carolina in an execution family's lawyer says and this is from cbc.ca and here's the excerpt. Lawyers for the family of Andrew Brown Jr., a black man shot by sheriff's deputies in North Carolina last week, said body cam video showed Brown had been executed and accused officials of showing them only a small portion of the video evidence. Lawyers for the family said the 42-year-old Brown had his hands on the steering wheel of his car and was complying with police orders when he was gunned down, leaving a trail of shell casings in the driveway of his home in Elizabeth City. And this is, uh, if you, oh, this is, uh, yeah, this, that was my brother calling, my identical twin brother, by the way, who wrote this book, The Capitalist Manifesto with Ralph Finko, which you should buy. Uh, just a little side note there. Lawyers for the family said the 42-year-old Brown had his hands on the steering wheel of his car and was complying with police orders when he was gunned down, leaving a trail of shell casings in the driveway of his home in Elizabeth City. They were shooting and saying, let me see your hands. At the same time, Chantel Sherry Lassiter, one of the team of lawyers for the family, told a news briefing on Monday. This might just be one of those uh, situations where, and I, I put this story in here. This is a different Brown, but... I do searches, and I, and I happen to snag this story. And this is Isaiah Brown shot by deputy who mistook phone for gun. Attorney says, this is from USA Today. A Virginia man is in intensive care after a sheriff's deputy shot him 10 times outside his home early Wednesday, his family said. Isaiah Brown, a 32-year-old black man, was walking down the street away from his house in Spotsylvania Ca County and was on the phone with a 911 dispatcher. So, so there you go. Uh, that's, that's what we're dealing with. So there we go. That might be very well what happened. And again, like I said, in the other story, you have a situation, I believe the, the, I don't know if it's racism as much. And because this is something that I think is true for black cops, Mexican cops, uh, or should I say Hispanic cops? Cause we're, we're lumping all all human beings together into that big overarching category or white cops another i think artificial lumping of a bunch of human beings into one category whatever the case might be i believe that it's much more the result of of cause and effect associations made that are really not there's some correlation there but it's not cause and effect and that when you when they're experiencing for instance an inordinate number of black people committing crimes that what now that part What's behind that is, uh, and I, when I say systemic racism, I don't mean in any way, shape, or form the way that the critical race theory people use that, that term because it's pretty invidious the way they use it. Uh, but I do mean in terms of there is a system that uh, facilitates uh, discriminatory action against individuals 
not necessarily based on their skin color, but but in fact, in point of fact, and how it's lived out, it's kind of uh, skin color. Although there are white, there are generations of poor white welfare families that also have experienced some some level along this line as well but not to the extent that I'm talking about with the black community. But you have a systemic racism in the form of a welfare program that was enacted in the, in, the, in 19, whenever, whenever it was, 1968, whenever the war on poverty thing happened. And, and which, for some reason, these, the, written by white men, white men who wrote this uh, welfare reform, welfare, well, created this welfare program, that required black people, or well, didn't require black people, but in, in effect, it was, I believe it was created because they knew fundamentally, and at least initially, it was the black people that were going to overwhelmingly need this service in the start because of the, the actual, like, real hardcore systemic racism that they were emerging from, that you couldn't have a husband. You couldn't have a, you, if you, if, if a woman wanted to get help for herself and her children, she couldn't have a husband. So they, they, they broke down the black community by removing black fathers from, from the family. And the welfare system didn't give them enough to, to do, build their own stuff. It just gave them enough to barely survive and it made them subsistent and it made them dependent upon the Democratic Party. And this was the work of the Democratic Party and it continues to this day. The Democratic Party is, is, is going to go down as one of the most, I mean, I don't know if the Republican Party will come out all that favorable in the end either, but the Democrat Party is going to come down as, as, as one of the worst parties in the history of the United States of America for the, for the bloodthirsty racism and bigotry that it exploited and continues to exploit to this day. And you can see it in, in black communities where generations of, fa- of families have been destroyed by this insane welfare program. And so that is what you're experiencing. That is what you're seeing. You're seeing communities that are fundamentally broken by federal policies enacted by Democrats, approved by Republicans, and no real effort by Republicans to change anything significant. Never a real offer to black communities to help lift them out because they're kind of complicit in it because they just said bootstraps. That was their response. And they blamed the black community for not having fathers. That was their response. They offered black communities no viable alternative to the democrat party and i think i'm going to end this uh this 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 video here